I'm Elisa Stovall, consultant with the Indiana IEP Resource Center, and I'm here at our sixth annual Fall Institute in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which we do in collaboration with Purdue University Fort Wayne. And I'm so pleased to have with us today Kathy Oler and Cheryl Boucher. I like to call you our I hate to write ladies because yeah. <laughs> everybody seems to know who you are when, when I describe you that way but you're so much more thank you for being with us well thank, thank you. you it's our pleasure it's been awesome yeah. it's been a great day looking forward to tomorrow great and and just my sense from the audience today they're listening and their engagement and taking it in this is this is good information for new educators to have so welcome and thank you at the same time uh, as I've said our audience is is uh, new educators, those that are in their first three years of teaching and working in schools, and we're talking about the writing process. What is important for someone new to the profession to know about these kids that struggle and have challenges with writing? Well, Cheryl and I are pretty passionate about this field, about this field of writing and the way writing impacts our students' academic achievement and their behavior. And I think it's valuable for new teachers to know this information going into the field. There's such a tendency to look at writing issues as just behavior, as non-compliant behavior. And it's important to set our students up for success. And if we can give teachers the tools to do that from the very beginning of their teaching careers, everybody's going to win on that. The students are going to win and the teachers are going to win. Oh, absolutely. We often talk about that someone with a, a challenge that's in a wheelchair or on crutches or has a brace, you see that right away. And so many times our students just look like it's, it's non-compliance, it's a behavior issue, and there's so much related to the writing process. So that if they can play detective and kind of open their eyes to the possibility that there's a reason why the student is having a challenge with writing. Um, Kathy and I, um, when we had written our book, we were trying to do something in an easy format that would be great for teachers to be able to have just a quick resource to grab and look at. And so by looking at four lenses of writing, and if you look at the four lenses that we've kind of comprised, you really will get the best out of your writer, out of your student. And so we look at the idea of sensory and motor, language and organization. And so if you have had all four of those lenses looked at carefully and see where the challenges there are and what kind of strategies can we do to help support those, strat those challenges. We look at the writing concerns and the writing issues um, in light of students with executive function learning differences. Well, executive function is a big field, a big area. I, you and we do full day trainings on executive function. But I always tell the audiences that there's a down and dirty definition of, of executive function. It's essentially how the brain takes in information and organizes it and remembers it and then does something with it. And because there isn't any blood test for executive function, a lot of our students get labels. They get some official labels like autism and specific learning disability, and they get some non-official labels like lazy and unmotivated and non-compliant. But the bottom line is the label doesn't matter. What does matter is that executive function learning differences affect the way our students learn. And it's the teacher's job to figure out how those differences are impacting their academic achievement and their behavior. That's very important. And if we give teachers the tools to recognize those learning differences, they're going to be much more successful at helping these students be successful writers. Absolutely. So if, if they have the tools, they meaning teachers, have the tools to look at a student and say, I need to know what you know. Mm -hmm and they can pull those, those pieces, that information, that, that knowledge out of the student in a way that they're able to show us right, in the classroom. Right, exactly, exactly. And when we look at those four lenses, that area of sensory, to make sure that your students are sensory regulated. And just sort of in a nutshell, just saying, is that student ready for, to be the best student he possibly can be? Is his nervous system calm, focused, attentive, um, and ready for learning and remembering? And if they're in crisis, if they're in stress or anxiety, or they're, they're struggling in some way, 
um, they're not well regulated. They're not listening. They're not going to be able to remember what you're teaching to begin with. And then that obviously impacts the writing process as well. So we have a lot of strategies we look at from a sensory uh, frame of reference of trying to put in activities that involve movement and exercise and trying to be provide um, accommodations for those things that are sensory overloads for whether it's visual and lighting and auditory and um, headphones and sensitivities towards um, it can be from smells it could be from you know anything in the environment that is bothering that student and from a sensory perspective how that's going to impact their success and then we're also looking at there's a huge amount of data and research on the benefits of aerobic exercise and Kathy and I always talk about, we're talking about a population of students that we're here to help support, but we're talking about all students, not just our kids with a particular special need. And so how we can look at universal design and support a classroom um, and look at the benefits of aerobic exercise in a structured way proactively throughout a student's school day. And the research is phenomenal on saying what it does positively from increasing attention and focus, increasing memory, um, increasing uh, stamina, decreasing learned helplessness, even um, behaviors and truancies and problems that were happening at school, they all went down when there was an increase of aerobic exercise. There are even uh, studies showing that standardized test scores went up when it was correlated with keeping your heart at, heart, at target heart rate uh, with aerobic exercise. So when you combine all of those pieces together, um, you get some really nice output from students. When you think of the initiatives of most school districts, most school corporations, they're focusing on two issues. They're focus focusing on academic achievement, i.e. literacy, and they're focusing on behavior. Yes. And this issue of writing factors in a major way in both of those areas. If you think about it, after the middle of second grade, writing is the way students show their proficiency in any mm -hmm. subject, That's even math. That's how we show they're, what we know. They're mm -hmm. expected to either exactly. pencil, paper, write, or keyboard. And if they can't or won't write, they can't show us what they know. So it affects their academic achievement and their, our ability to measure their academic achievement. In behavior, when we're establishing behavior supports for students in school, it's important to look at what the trigger for the behavior is. And in a huge percentage of instances, the behavior trigger is a request to do work. Get busy, do your work, and then the behavior occurs. Well, what does that usually mean, do your work? It usually means write something. You know, do your worksheet, do your homework, take your test. It usually means write something. So if we can set students up for success and address those needs before they actually write, we can eliminate a lot of the behaviors and increase their academic achievement. Well, I think that is, is a, a great place to, to begin with, with new educators thinking about, so what does this writing have to do with, you know, why is it so important? I, I thank you for your expertise and for your time here with us in Fort Wayne with these new educators. And uh, we'll continue to, to, uh, to build on this, hopefully, in the future. Thank you, and thank you for inviting us to be part of the Fall Institute. Thanks so much. It's great. I can't wait for tomorrow. We're going to have another good day.